Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning if you're uh, watching on Zoom. Uh, you can give me a little wave if you want. Good morning if you're uh, on Facebook and watching. I was going to try and do St. Clever and keep along on Facebook on my phone as well, but I think that might be uh, one too many things to juggle. Um, well, welcome to uh, Gorse Hill Baptist Church uh, morning service. Uh, my name is David Mildenhall. I'm leading uh, and speaking today. Uh, I'm a member uh, at the church. Uh, and it's really, really great uh, that you're joining us this morning. I wonder, uh, especially for those people who I can see on Zoom, but if you're on Facebook, you can join in too. wonder if you're up for a bit of uh, audience participation today. Um, I've learned a little bit of British Sign Language, uh, only a few things. Uh, I've learned Amen, which is this. Amen. There we go. Do you want to give that a go? Amen. Uh, this is God. Uh, this is Lord. I like that one, making like the little L shapes with your hands. And then, uh, quite fitting for this morning's service, as we're going to be reading from Psalm 150 later, uh, praise the Lord. It's like two thumbs up doing that, and then the Lord at the end. Uh, that's the same for hallelujah as well, of course, which is praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Uh, amen. So uh, at any point in the service today, uh, if you hear something in a song or a prayer, or hopefully maybe the sermon later as well that you really like uh, and you agree with, then go Amen or praise the Lord. Uh, that'd be really great to see people joining in on the screen uh, like that. Uh, anyway, we're going to hand over straight away now to Mark and the team, uh, and they're going to lead us into some sung worship. We're going to come together to uh, worship through song, but before we do that, um, a reading from part of Psalm 145, uh, from, a, from a slightly more modern translation, I guess, than we may normally use, but um, just reflect and enjoy the words as you listen. My heart explodes with praise to you. Now and forever, my heart bows in worship to you, my King and my God. Every day I will lift up my praise to your name with praises that will last throughout eternity. Lord, you are great and worthy of the highest praise, for there is no end to the discovery of the greatness that surrounds you. Generation after generation will declare more of your greatness and declare more of your glory, your magnificent splendor and the miracles of your majesty and my constant meditation. I don't know about you, but there are some words of real encouragement in there, but also some words of great challenge. Can I truly say, I lift my heart in praise every day? Is my heart exploding with praise? However we feel as we come together to worship, we have that opportunity to praise God in our virtual togetherness. So let's do that now.
Father, we thank you that we only need to look to you and you provide all of the strength we need. You are our great, our mighty, our all-powerful God. You are the only God worthy of all our praise. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, the theme of praise uh, is is the theme that we're going to be exploring in our service today. Uh, Lars, I wonder if we could have uh, the pictures, please. 
Here we go. So we've got some, uh, we've got some moments, uh, that people often praise and celebrate. Some of them are very specific. Uh, some of them are more general, but you can use, uh, the chat feature if you want to click in and let me know if you know, uh, what's being praised, uh, or celebrated here. And I wonder if anybody knows the significance of, uh, of this celebration. You can tell the person next to you if you want, if you're on Facebook or have a little think. Nothing's popping up in the chat window. Brian Mildenhall knows, I reckon. It's just, uh, there we go. Yes. So, um, nice one, guys. Uh, so that's Liverpool, uh, earlier in the week. Uh, they lifted the Premier League trophy in the first time, uh, the first time that that team and its supporters have been able to celebrate, uh, winning, uh, the, uh, the championship. Uh, let's have the next picture. <laughs> next one, please, Lars. Look at what's in the chat. Here we go. So what was particularly significant uh, about this uh, victory? What's being celebrated here? Who is getting all the praise? Do we know? This is uh, this is Lewis Hamilton, and I think winning his sixth uh, drivers' world title, uh, and I think that either does that equal him with Schumacher, or it puts him pretty close. Um, but this is this is him actually celebrating in the USA uh, after winning uh, coming second in a Grand Prix, I think, and winning a sixth uh, world title. Let's have the next one, Lars. What's being celebrated here? Oh, I wonder if you can. Wonder if anyone can remember this film got loads of praise, loads of praise. Can you remember? It was, it was Avatar. Does anybody remember why it got so much praise though when it came out of the cinema? There was something specific about it that everybody went crazy over. Anybody recall? <laughs> the use of blue paint. <laughs> No, uh, it's not the use of blue paint. It was, it was, the, it was all in 3D. Um, but as someone I know said, well, my whole life's in 3D. So, so what if I can see a film in 3D? But the whole film was in 3D and that was something that, uh, people praised and celebrated and went crazy over. Um, Lars, could we have the next one, please? Ah, here we go. Uh, this was more recent. Uh, what's being celebrated here? You may remember. Uh, joining in with these kind of celebrations. I know we had a little party uh, in the garden. It is, it's VE Day. Uh, and we all celebrated uh, recently, uh, well, a couple of months ago now, I guess. Uh, but yeah, we all we all joined in with that celebration and it would have been a an even bigger celebration, an even bigger party in in any other circumstance, wouldn't it? But not not this time. Um Lars, let's have the next one. What's being celebrated and praised in the next picture? Have we got the next one? I'm still seeing the VE celebration picture. I don't know what anyone else is seeing. Oh. I can carry, I can carry, ah, here we go. Nice one. Here we go. Who's that celebrating there? Wonder if anybody knows why he was celebrating. Who's this there? Can you remember? It was, it was Andy Murray uh, winning his first, uh, his first Wimbledon title. I think he's won it twice, uh, but that's his first win uh, coming close uh, in previous years, always making it to like some big, crunch match on a Wednesday night and the whole nation getting behind him and coming so close. But finally, uh, finally, uh, he won. And I love, I love that picture where he's there celebrating and that whole sea of people, uh, in front of him celebrating and, and praising as well. Uh, Lars, can we have the next picture? Wonder if you know what's being celebrated there. A bit more of a general one. Anybody know? Type it in the chat. I could, I could hear them shouting upstairs. Yeah, well done upstairs. It's someone's birthday party. Uh, they're celebrating there with all their friends. 
uh, having a wonderful time. Lask, do we have the net? Was there one more? I think this might be the final one. What's being celebrated here? I've seen, I've seen pictures. People have still still managed to to have this big celebration at the end of the school year. Well done. Yeah, these these small children here are graduating. Uh, and ordinarily, there are, again, massive, massive celebrations, aren't there, for people graduating. Um, but, yeah, graduating is another time uh, that we uh, praise and celebrate. Thank you very much, Lars, for sharing those. Um, someone called C.S. Lewis, who you might know, wrote uh, The Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, he said something, uh, and I've kind of put it in my own words uh, to help myself understand it. But C.S. Lewis said... We don't enjoy something or someone that we admire or love. We don't enjoy it as much as we could until we actually praise it. The completion of our joy is in the praise itself. I wonder if you can remember uh, the 6th of October, 2001. You're going to be racking your brains now trying to think, what am I going to refer to? 6th of October, 2001. It's Greece 2, England 1 at Old Trafford. Uh, It's in stoppage time and England need to draw. They need one point to automatically qualify from the group uh, and qualify for the World Cup. Uh, in 2002, but they're losing 2-1 to Greece and it's injury time and the referee's going to blow the whistle any time. And there's a foul and England get a free kick about 30 yards out uh, and up steps the England captain, David Beckham. He puts the ball down. Uh, the In France, 98, if you remember, he got sent off and everybody hated him, uh, but he's got this moment now and he puts the ball down and he steps up And he curls it into the corner and the goalkeeper doesn't even move. And Beckham turns away and runs to the corner. All the England players run after him. And imagine, imagine if 60,000 England fans in the stadium just turned to each other with a smile on their face and went, pretty good goal. You know, pretty good goal. And, you know, we can particularly appreciate it more because of the magnitude of the occasion. Well done. Well done. No, they don't do that, do they? 60,000 England fans and many more watching at home jump up and go crazy. And the moment is more enjoyable because it is praised. And in the same way, we enjoy God more when we praise him. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, David, you're making praise all about our happiness and not God's greatness. I don't think so. Let's think about that England game. When 60,000 England fans are going crazy, enjoying the goal, no one stops and thinks, look at how selfish they're all being just thinking of their own happiness. No, their joyous celebration makes Beckham look great. And our joyous praise of God does the same to him. Okay, we've got a couple of uh, little notices now. Um, The first one is a notice uh, from me, and then I think there's another video we're going to watch. Um. I really need uh, your help with something. Uh, We are going to attempt uh, to still have the fun day this year. Um, If you remember, every year, late August, we have the fun day on the wreck. Uh, Hundreds of people come along and it's a really, really wonderful day. Uh, We can't do that this year, uh, but we do have uh, another idea. Uh, We're calling it the Fun Day Takeaway uh, 2020. So, of course, everything still has to be really, really safe. We still have to wait for a bit of an update from the government on how events run. Um, But what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to have almost everything that we normally would have done at the Fun Day, 
uh, in little takeaway packs uh, that people can come along to church, uh, pick up, take home, and then enjoy safely uh, with their family over the bank holiday weekend. So if you've ever helped at the fun day, uh, or you've ever done something at WeCreate, or CFC, or Friday Night Fun, or anything, and already you can think about how you could make that into a little takeaway pack, would you please get in touch with me? I'm hoping uh, by next weekend to have heard from everyone who thinks, you know what, I'd love to put together some packs for the fun day. Uh, Get in touch with me and I can talk you through it. uh, uh, And then we can carry on making plans for the fun day. But keep it in your prayers. Um, As I said, there's still a lot of stuff we have to work out, uh, but it's a real great blessing to our community. And we really, really want to still try and do something uh, towards the end of summer. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, Lars, I think we've got our, our next notice now. Hi, if I could just take a couple of minutes of your time just to highlight the flyer attached to the Friday update. It's in support of the Old Men Riding Group and this year's 100 mile challenge bike ride will be in support of a local charity, the Prospect Hospice. Um, please have a read of it. Um, If you need any more information, then see myself, John Wood, Alistair Parrish or Brian Mildenhall. Um, And if at all possible, and if you are able to, then your support in donating would be greatly appreciated. Many thanks. Okay, uh, Lucy is now going to lead us in our prayers. Hey, thanks, Dave. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, the immortal, the incomparable, and the only wise God, we praise your glorious name. As we gather today from our homes and connected by Zoom or Facebook, remind us that we are still one church and one church family, all connected by our love for you. Almighty Father, Thank you for opening our hearts so we can still see your love around us. Thank you for all the school teachers, the school staff who have continued to support children and families during lockdown. We pray they may have a relaxing summer so they're rested, ready for next term. Thank you, Father, for the scientists and doctors who are working towards a vaccine for COVID. Please bless them with the wisdom and patience they need to safely continue the work they're doing. Heavenly Father, we pray for the interviews for the youth worker next Friday. We pray for the interviewing panel to be open-minded and continue to listen to you so that your will will be done at Gorse Hill. We also keep in mind each candidate. We pray that they will feel your calming presence when preparing for their interview. We pray that the right candidate for our church will shine. But we also pray for peace for everyone else. May they still be excited to serve you and know that if if your plan was not at Gorse Hill, that you've got another equally exciting plan already in place for everyone. Almighty Father, who can do more than we can imagine, thank you that we're still given the opportunity to broadcast your love to our local community this August. Thank you that preparations have already begun for the Takeaway Funday. Thank you for the team who have already started to work for their enthusiasm and passion to serve you. Please guide them to ensure maximum safety for everyone and maximum fun for all the families who we can reach. But whatever we are led to do, please pray to remember to keep you at the centre and that we can draw strength from you. And Father, we pray for our economy as businesses start to reopen. We pray for hairdressers and beauticians, gyms, hotels, pubs, cafes, and anyone else starting to go back to work. Please help them to remember the safety of their workers, despite how tough circumstances have been. We remember anyone who's been out of work and have been scared or worried for whatever reason. Please be with them in times of uncertainty and reassure them that they will never be alone. There is help out there and they are loved by you. We remember who we are praying to. We ask you all of this because we know you are God Almighty, God of Almighty Power. 
As the Bible reminds us, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works and will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. We lift up our prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, I'm going to be uh, preaching on Psalm 150 in just a moment. Uh, and Jess Robertson uh, is going to do our reading for us. Thank you, Jess. This reading is from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the soundings of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lair. Praise him with the string, with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his word. Thank you, Jess. Super job. Thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, Psalm 150. Uh, it's the final psalm uh, in the book of Psalms, uh, and it's the last psalm that we're going to be looking at uh, in our sermon series on the Psalms. Uh, we haven't done all of them. Uh, we've just looked at a selection of them. Uh, but grief, anger, and sadness... A third of all the psalms uh, are lamentations. Uh, that means a third of the psalms are filled with agony uh, and unhappiness. Uh, and yet, at the end uh, of this book, the final five psalms are psalms of praise. And they finish with Psalm 150, the ultimate psalm of praise. And the psalms... Uh, alongside the rest of the whole of the Bible, say the same thing. It all ends in praise. There is pain. There is suffering. There is sadness. We can be hurt. We often feel overwhelmed and we sin. But ultimately, God heals, God restores, God helps, and God forgives. And there is praise and this is the journey of the Psalms. This is the journey through the whole, whole Bible. Uh, and this is the journey of life. And one glorious day, Psalm 150, uh, will be true every day uh, forever. And I hope that you, uh, I hope that you see uh, that pattern. Uh, the message of the Psalms and the message of the whole Bible is this. Stick with God. Keep going. Don't give up. It all ends in praise. And no matter how much we suffer, and no matter how much we doubt, and no matter how angry we get, and no matter how many times we say, oh Lord, how long, no matter what, it all ends in praise. So let's have a closer look at uh, Psalm 150. Uh, in uh, his commentary on the whole Bible, Matthew Henry um, supposes that perhaps Psalm 150 uh, was a psalm for the Levites. Uh, I don't know. I'm not kind of like an expert in like Old Testament um temple worship but Matthew Henry supposes that maybe Psalm 150 was kind of like a song that got the Levites uh, pumped up uh, and ready to go into the temple and serve the door serve the Lord uh, all day long um, I don't know if you know what a hype song is uh, it's quite popular in American sports it's increasingly popular over here um, but I'll give you a few examples so 
the University of Clemson American football team. They play at Memorial Stadium. There's like 80,000 people pack the stadium every week uh, to watch them play. And the stadium goes like all the way around. Apart from behind the goal, uh, the stadium just stops. And then there's just a grass hill leading down to the field. Um, and then the stadium carries on again after that. And before every game, all of the Clemson Tiger players gather at the top of the hill uh, all of the fans in the stadium start singing uh, the university fight song. And just as that reaches a crescendo, uh, the players sprint down the hill uh, onto the field and everyone in the stadium uh, goes wild. Uh, maybe a bit like uh, You Never Walk Alone, uh, that the Liverpool fans sing uh, as Liverpool walk out onto the pitch. Uh, a few years ago, uh, a BBC reporter asked Andy Murray, uh, what was his favourite uh, Grand Slam event to play? And the BBC reporter kind of thought, he's going to say Wimbledon, isn't he, of course. Uh, and Andy Murray said, it's the US Open. Uh, and Murray was asked, why does he like the US Open so much? Uh, and he said, well, many of the matches are played at night. And when you walk out onto the court, they let you pick the song that you walk out to. Uh, and then when they do the change of ends and the ball boys and the ball girls roll the tennis balls up and down, uh, they play rock music uh, over the tannoy. Uh, and Andy Murray just said, I just find it helps to raise my energy levels and get going for the for the tennis match. Um, we as a school, the school where I'm at, we uh, have a partnership with a charity called Spread the Happiness Um they're involved in lots and lots of schools around the country. And we had someone from the charity come out and speak to us. Uh, and they encouraged all of us to try and have uh, an anthem. Um, so a song that we played in the car or we played on our phone as we walked into work, a kind of song uh, that got us fired up uh, and ready for the day. And that just makes me imagine kind of like the Levites maybe getting out of bed in the morning and dragging themselves to the temple and not really feeling like it and Psalm 150 blasting over the temple tannoy system. I know they wouldn't have had that, but go with it. Uh, and Psalm 150 blasting out and getting these Levites uh, hyped up uh, and passionate uh, for praising God. And of course, there's a reason why hype songs exist. Hype songs exist because we don't always feel like it. And actually, more often than not, we're not in the mood. We don't feel like praising God. We lack the energy or we lack the passion. We lack the drive to praise God as he should be praised. And if that's you today, and, and let's face it, 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 it probably is because it describes me then actually Psalm 150 tells us that we can take heart. Psalms like this exist because we need to be called and inspired and sometimes fired up to praise God. God knows what we're like. And he provides in his word the kindling to ignite our hearts ablaze in worship. So if you are finding it hard to praise God at the moment, come to his book and find your hype song. We should also be praising God uh, in the sanctuary, uh, as Jess read. Uh, I remember um, the youth pastor, Mike Pilavachi, uh, speaking to our young people when they, we took them many years ago to Soul Survivor. He said, you can sit in your bedroom and you can put a Hillsong CD on as loud as you like and you can get as many of your teddies on the bed as you can and it still won't be church. Praise him in the sanctuary and praise him among his people. I've been keeping an eye on the, the names that pop up, especially in the Zoom room uh, over the weeks. Uh, and I can I can see that there are some of you who uh, are watching uh, and have been watching during uh, the lockdown who perhaps before the lockdown, you didn't really gather with us uh, that much. And you're kind of like finding your place with us uh, during this pandemic. Um, and I just want to say, please, 
If you've enjoyed gathering with us on screen, please, when it's safe to do so, come and gather with us in person. Come and praise God in the sanctuary. Come and praise God with God's people. We would love you, love you to come along uh, and feel and experience what that is like to sit uh, alongside other faithful saints who are going through all kinds of things, but together uh, praising God for his greatness. Uh, These Zoom meetings remind me of two things. uh, And I guess for you, they could remind you of the same things if you want. The first thing, it reminds me how great it is to praise and pray and hear the word together. And like Lucy said, it's great that we still get to do that. But also the incompleteness of meeting on Zoom uh, reminds me of the joy and the blessing and the privilege that it is to actually gather together uh, in the sanctuary. So we praise God in the sanctuary. We also praise God um, in his mighty heavens. We praise him for his mighty deeds and we praise him according to his excellent greatness. In some translations, it says we praise him in his filament, I think it says. And that essentially means kind of like under the open spaces. Uh, I think it, I think it's meant to mean if you basically if you look up and you can see the sky, then you are somewhere where you should be praising God. Um, Basically, if you find yourself under the sky, praise God. And that means that there isn't anywhere uh, where you can go uh, where you no longer are called uh, to praise God. Uh, It doesn't mean if you go on holiday to Cornwall, you get to stop praising God for a week. Or if you go on holiday to Kent or Scotland, um, you don't get to, you're not going to somewhere where you're no longer called there to praise God. If you're under the sky, if you look up and you can see the blue sky or you see clouds or you see the stars at night, then you are somewhere where you should be praising God. And you might say, I guess, yeah, but you don't know where I am right now. You don't know uh, what's going on. I just want to share a couple of things that I've read recently. One in the Bible in a Year group that we've got uh, and another one in... um, Uh, in our house group. Uh, The first one is this, in Matthew uh, 28, verse 20, Jesus makes an incredible promise uh, that he will always be with us. So that means that I'm not really on my own in my living room right now. Uh, Jesus is here. And you're not really just on your own there or with someone on the sofa Uh, Jesus is there right now with you also. And we read this in house group uh, in the week. Let me read it to you. This is from Micah 5. We often read this at Christmas. It's a wonderful text. And he will stand and he will shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will dwell secure. For now he will be great to the ends of the earth. That means that right now, not only is Jesus with you, but right now, Jesus is looking after you, is keeping you safe, is protecting you like you are a little sheep and he is the shepherd. And he's protecting you and looking after you right now where you are, with the whole power of God as his strength. So actually, yes, wherever we are under the great big sky above us, Jesus is great. His deeds are mighty. His power to protect us and look after us and keep us safe is infinite. So yes, wherever we are today, uh, we can praise God move on to the next bit of Psalm 150 now. We have this incredible list uh, of instruments, uh, an incredible variety, uh, a number of different ways we are called to praise uh, God. And I know what Mark Harris is thinking. Yes, 
more dance worship in church is what we need. I think it's what it's saying there. I can't see him on my screen. I know he, I know he loves uh, his dance and his music. So we'll see, maybe we'll see some of that next week. But the kind of point here, I guess, is that the worship is very, very varied. Um, I was thinking about Paul Knight, uh, the previous pastor, because he, he retired uh, last weekend. Uh, and I was remembering, uh, and some of you who were at the church at the time will probably remember as well, uh, Paul would uh, pray uh, in that little room, just as you go into the uh, into the church building, that little room on the right, I always forget its name, but Paul would be in there with the deacons and whoever's leading the service at the time. And I reckon they were having their own kind of Psalm 150 moment, because when the prayer was done, Paul Knight would like fly out of that room. He would like rush past the door stewards and he would race into the sanctuary and he and you can join in at home with the catchphrase if you know it he would shout here we are and here we go and that was the music group's cue to just jump up straight away and and just start playing and kind of like it would catch us off guard a little bit and he would come racing down the front and then he'd get to um he'd get to the lectern at the front and then he'd he'd start doing this because if you remember he had a he had a little phase where he had his own little tambourine um, but every week, someone in the music group, I think, would hide it. <laughs> uh, they'd take it in turns to hide it somewhere. And so he'd be looking around for it. But it, it wasn't always that well hidden because we knew he loved to do it. So he, he would find it. Um, and I think it was hidden because there was one word, uh, one word only that could describe uh, poor Knight's tambourine playing. Uh, and that was enthusiastic. Um, but there's, there's something in the tambourine, though, isn't there? Um, it's a bit of a cliche Christian instrument, uh, the tambourine, but it's mentioned throughout the Bible. And I know when Heidi and Constance and Talitha, they, they go into the corner, um, grab a banner, grab a musical instrument. And I kind of just try and stuff my hands in my pocket and just focus on the monitor. And I remember one week, um, Con just grabbed a tambourine and gave it to me and said, you, you play as well, uh, daddy. Um, and I just kind of held this tambourine against my leg, uh, tapping it. Um, and actually, I think I experienced a little bit of probably what Paul Knight was experiencing with his tambourine. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Um, and we are absolutely blessed in our church, as we saw earlier, with musicians uh, that are incredibly skilled uh, with their hands uh, and their voices as well. And they are able to lead us uh, in our praise. Uh, and that's that's throughout the Bible as well. Skilled musicians leading God's people uh, in praise. But I have to say, for many of us, that's not the yardstick by which we measure our praise. It's not the skill that we have in our fingers It's the joy that we have in our hearts. So all of us, whether or not we are skilled at an instrument or good at singing, we can make a joyful noise to the Lord. And I think the tambourine uh, symbolizes that wonderfully. Um, And I've been challenged um, by this part of this psalm as I think about it uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, I must admit, at times I can be a little bit of a grumpy old man uh, with with my son worship at church. Um, I've got this. Uh, don't tell anyone. I picked it up from the back of the church. There's loads of them. Uh, it's the Baptist uh, hymn book. Uh, funny enough, Constance loves this book and uh, often takes it out when we go out, uh, just carries it around. And so, sometimes we go to get in the car and she's like, my hymn book, my hymn book. Uh, I don't know. People, of course, people don't uh, know know what it is if they see it out, out and about with it. I don't think anyone's going, why's that three-year-old got the Baptist hymn book? Um, but I, I love flicking through and reading uh, the hymns uh, in this book um, and, the, and the depth of them, the depth of the words. And sometimes, sometimes with our modern songs, I get a little bit like, you know what? It's a little bit repetitive, this one, isn't it? It's just kind of the same words over and over again. Psalm 150, okay? The praise song of praise songs, breathed out by God himself as the final praise song in the book of Psalms. Uh, It's only, what is it, six verses. It says, praise the Lord, 13 times. 
God wrote a hymn and there's repetition all the way through it. Uh, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a depth to the songs that we sing and the things that we think about when we think about God. Of course there should be, uh, but let's not miss uh, the simplicity and the joy uh, that our praise should have. And that brings us um, pretty much to the final uh, the final verse, uh, verse six. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I love this quote. Let me read it to you. You don't have to be great at a lot of things to make a difference in the world. You don't have to know a lot of things to make a difference in the world. You just have to know one or two really great things and be totally gripped by them to make a difference in the world. And verse six here in Psalm 150 tells us the great purpose that we all have. We exist to praise the Lord. Of course, we don't praise the Lord like we should. We don't praise him in the sanctuary like we should. We don't stand with our brothers and sisters and praise him like we should. We let little tiny things get in the way. We have little arguments and disagreements with each other. We don't praise him wherever we go. We sometimes go away on holiday and we maybe leave our Bibles at home because it's like a holiday from God as well. But in 1 Corinthians uh, 6.20, Uh, We are told that we are not our own. We were bought at a price. So we should glorify God with our body. We should glorify God in everything we do. We should let our whole life uh, be praised to him. And this great cost that our lives was bought with uh, was the life of our Lord Jesus. He laid down his life so that we could be called to a life of praise. I love that bit. You don't have, you only have to know one or two really great things and be totally gripped by them to make a difference in the world. I don't know a lot about astrophysics, but I know the greatest thing about astrophysics. It exists to praise God. I don't know a lot about microbiology. I know a little bit, but I don't know much. But I know the greatest thing about microbiology, it exists to praise God. And I don't know a lot about you. I know a lot about some of you. I know a little bit about a lot of you, but I don't really know you. But I do know the greatest thing about you. And that is you exist to praise God. Amen. Thank you. Uh, We're going to carry on praising God now together. And Mark uh, and the team uh, are going to lead us in another song.
I'm going to read Psalm 150 again as a final blessing. Why don't you read it uh, every day this week? Why don't you perhaps even uh, memorize it? Uh, But let God use it uh, to call you uh, to a life of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud crashing cymbals. And let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.